Hello there, my name is Ismos and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial and uh, today we're going to be doing something different and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, some Python programming uh, with Blender. So yeah, let's see what we're going to be doing here. Let me just play back. See, we have a digital keypad lock and I uh, can see we are maybe hacking it and uh, we're getting some awesome messages here uh, reminding us how awesome we are. Yeah, so uh, this is something that looks simple, but uh, it's not as easy as it looks, especially if you're going to try and make it without any programming. So I try to look for different tutorials on how to do something at counting a countdown or count up, whatever, changing text like this, uh, because you can see this is a single text. Uh, it's not a texture. If I can pick it up, I can even scale, let me scale it up can see yeah so trying to do this uh, without any programming can uh, can be a bit hard I've tried it and uh, I couldn't find a way to get it to work uh, without uh, Python and I can see I also have this text here uh, that also changes and uh, the good thing about this is if I go to the script here I can change uh, this text to say whatever I want so if I open up here let me just find some random text here I'll just pick this and paste it, replace, replace this string. Uh, hopefully I don't get any errors as a result. Okay, let's see now. Just have to run the script, make sure I don't get any errors. And uh, now if we play back, Every value, whatever, whatever the, the text was set. Actually, I'm playing this backwards. Yeah, so you can see it's playing back word for word uh, in this, this sentence that we have just pasted in. Let me increase the timeline here. Now we will just have this right here. So you can use a text here, maybe you pick from After Effects to do this, but uh, yeah, if you want to stick with Blender, I think this is the best way to handle this. And uh, After Effects will, may also not give you the best results if you try to do this using a texture material. Let's see. Now this is also text. Let's see. And there you have a nice system. So let's look at uh, how I made the script. So uh, the way I go to make this, uh, if you have been following the channel for a while, uh, you would remember that uh, I was trying to create a script uh, that mimics, uh, that can do this kind of video. Uh, this data is beautiful video. It's a very nice channel that uh, kind of um, visualizes a data using whatever program they're using. I think they're using, I don't think they're even using After Effects because I tried After Effects and it's really doing something like this is really not as simple as it looks. I, I know I use a lot of different programs and I've tried several of them to achieve something like this. And I even tried using uh, PHP and HTML to see if I can render these uh, using uh, a combination of HTML, PHP and JavaScript, but uh, it was a lot of work. So I figured maybe because I know some uh, 3D and Python, I could try using Blender. And uh, yeah, I've been running into a few issues, uh, but uh, in the first part uh, that I did, uh, I figured out how to, I can also watch the video, I'll be leaving a link in the description. I figured out how, how to change a CSV file uh, that would contain all the data uh, that uh, they are animating here and convert it into bars like this, uh, cubes, uh, that can be animated uh, in the same in the same fashion that uh, that you see here. But uh, the problem was getting these digits to count as you see them here. And maybe the other problem was how to make these uh, bars kind of go up and down like that. But uh, I was making them kind of animate or scale on the x-axis very easily. But uh, moving them up and down, and also this changing the text like this, how these numbers are increasing 
is quite hard. Uh, that's why I came up with uh, this script. I'd play around and see how I can get it to work. And uh, it's a quite a very simple script to say. And uh, yeah, so let's dive in and uh, look at it. Uh, so yeah, so most of the script you see here is just running uh, this part and uh, the other part is uh, for this. So this is the entirety of uh, the entire script running these two uh, texts. I'll be leaving uh, the entire document, uh, not, not include, including this project because that's a different project, but uh, I'll be leaving this script uh, to my Patreon, on my Patreon page. If you want to check it out, you'll be, you can just download it there if you are a patron. And uh, I think I'll also be turning it into a kind of a, an add-on uh, that you can just interface with uh, directly in the panels so, and maybe have an, uh, an area to type in uh, a string or text like this and uh, then it will animate on uh, playback here or another text field where you can add numbers like this uh, to kind of uh, create something like a hacking where digits, random digits are kind of being uh, displayed like that and uh, it will just be, you will just interface it with a uh, a click of buttons uh, to have it play like this. Uh, but uh, anyway, let, let, let me break down the script for you just a bit here. So uh, the main part of this script is uh, this part here. And uh, so basically there are two functions here uh, that are running the entire thing. So this function here and uh, this function here. And uh, it's very simple. Let me just break it down for you uh, in a new project here just to show you. Uh, so by default, when you're running a function in, uh, or as when you're running a script in Blender, you just hit run script and the script will run once. Uh, so if you want to change this value, it will change it once and that's it. But uh, because we want to show an animation, uh, when we play back here, I uh, want uh, the digits to count down. So we need this function to be updating our viewport or the text on every frame. So you, we need to have a way to kind of run the script over and over on every frame. Uh, That's why we have this, uh, these two functions. One is to kind of uh, register or activate the script on every frame, and uh, the other one is to deactivate it when, if we want to. But I didn't deactivate it because I didn't want that, uh, since I want this to be continuous. Um, so yeah. Uh, basically, and uh, most of this is just to organize uh, things to make it simple. But uh, the the gist of it is just this line here. And uh, basically, you can also just go go how to run a function on every frame, and uh, you will get uh, this line here. It's a very simple. Uh, so it's just let me just do it directly in a new program here. So go to scripting. So let me run a script on every frame. Uh, that prints out the frame. Let me just slide this so that we have our timeline. Now if we play back, see nothing is happening. I'm going to add a text, a text like this. Maybe rotate it 90 degrees to face me and uh, add a new script. Uh, you want to start with uh, the line import BPY. This tells Blender that uh, you, you want to use Python or oh, it's a way to activate Python to make it able to change uh, the interface or interact with uh, the Blender application. Uh, then if you have that, uh, when the second thing we're going to need is the kind of, it's called a handler in uh, in, in Blender Python, in BPY, uh, but uh, I'm just going to call it a function. Uh, so, and uh, you, can, you can find all the methods or functions you can use uh, using Python and Blender. Uh, if you just go here and type in BPY, dot then you can uh, and if you hold on control space you should see all the uh, different methods uh, that can be used with blender and uh, if you go say uh, to up then hit control space and then control space you can see all the other mes methods that can be used with this uh, handle and uh, so what we're looking for is uh, uh, is a function or a method that can let us run uh, the any function we have in the script every time or any f yeah any function we have in the script every time uh, we play back on on every frame so instead of just going through here and uh, try looking through uh, the because this is the handle we have we want to look for so it's under handlers and you type in that con then you again find uh, 
can see, let's see, we have frame change. Uh, this is the function that lets you or alerts you on uh, when the frame has changed and uh, what to do w if you want to have anything done there. We have a few other things here, like uh, after re render post, after the render has completed, I have a render completed, render cancel. So these are just methods uh, that can let you uh, kind of change how Blender works. Uh, but uh, I'm just going to copy the line. Uh, you can also just Google it and uh, you will find something like this. So just copy this direct, I'll just copy this directly and uh, paste it here. So basically this is the line. Uh, it just tells, runs a function we have in a script. It doesn't run the entire script. It just runs a function within our script. Uh, so this, the entire script is this file here, but uh, we can have more than uh, one function. So it just runs a, a specific function every frame and uh, this is uh, the function we have we haven't write it, written it down uh, so let me just write it by defining it def this is how you define a function in python uh, so i'll just call this run on every frame and uh, semicolon and then then whatever you want to run has to be in here uh, you can write it here so i'll just i uh, change this text uh, to the frame to the current frame and uh, to get the current frame we can i think it's under let me just see if i can remember this bpy dot context uh, which is uh, the entire scene and then if i do this i think we can access uh, the scene and then is it frame yeah frame current so whenever i run this i get uh, the current frame and you can see it's, it's showing me 27 and uh, that's what we have here so if I run it again, it will show me 76. Uh, so that's what we want to do. So if I I can print this out, print current frame. Let me just add this into a variable. So I'll call this current, current frame equals that. And I'll just print out current frame. So if I just run this right now, I'm getting an error because this requires an argument. Uh, this uh, uh, method here requires an argument, uh, which is our function here. So if I have this, if I print the, that out, run again, you can see now we don't have that error. But uh, whenever you're running uh, this here, you also want to know, because Blender has different scenes, uh, depending on the hierarchy, you can see here we are in a scene called scene. So if you added a different scene here, uh, this script wouldn't know uh, what scene to update. So to make sure that uh, it's running the scene that you want to run, you, I'm just going to run, you just have to add another variable here called scene, and uh, we don't need these brackets here. So it will just call this, basically this is how you write uh, this function. You can just copy directly uh, the code or just find a, a better explanation than I'm trying to explain here. Uh, because I try, I'm trying to get this, to make sure that this is not too long. So if I run, uh, nothing is happening because we're not updating any of the scene here. Uh, this print line only prints in the console. So if you go under window, toggle system console, you can see that uh, we have printed uh, 76 and uh, we also have an error here that uh, was that was as a result of not having uh, this function as an argument to this uh, line here so if I uh, run every frame let me just minimize this so that we can see what's going on here in this console you can see now we have the frames being printed and also an error being printed so the thing about using this uh, let me make sure I don't overwrite anything here. Just call this test three. So the reason we are getting this error here uh, is that uh, we, we have already cleared it in our script, but uh, this handler here are uh, kind of saved uh, the 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 previous code. Every code you write here, you up, every time you update the function, it doesn't replace the function is just writes it, it doesn't replace uh, the function in your session that has been saved by this line but uh, it adds in another function so if i do something like a uh, print current frame uh, plus uh, some words some random words here 
at uh, this is a this is this should be a string so i need to wrap that into a string so if i run this you see that uh, it's running it's printing out uh, the previous uh, function where we only had current frame uh, that is 45 and then car the what we have just updated uh, plus this uh, what words we have added so you can see 55 plus this so if you want that the previous uh, iterations of the functions or changes you have are not to be printed back uh, you can just close out this session and uh, restart uh, the blender uh, so that uh, the entire session is new uh, without the previous functions i'm not sure why it's freezing right now but uh, let me just restart that okay i have a lot of sessions here so i'm not sure which one it is Anyway, I don't really need that anymore. Let me just explain using this here. Yes, yeah, so this is the function we are running every frame, and uh, you can see it being called um, being change text. Yes, yeah, so I created a different function because I just wanted it to be a little bit simpler. So I brought this into I created another function that called uh, this function. So that I don't always have to go back to this handler uh, that is being called uh, by this line here. Is this most of this is just to make things a bit more readable than uh, this is just making things run faster and efficiently. So it, uh, it's sagging for some reason. So let me just call a different version of Blender. Let me just open up another session of Blender. Uh, no, this has gone on too long. Uh, let me, I'll just create a different part, part two to continue from here. Uh, but uh, basically, let me just run over what we have done in this part. Uh, so again, we wanted a function that can be called on every frame uh, by this handler. And uh, this is the function we have. And uh, just so we complete this uh, part, I'm going to make sure to make this text change uh, to whatever frame we have, to whatever uh, thing we have here. So. Uh, to make this change so to access the data of this object you can access it by un going under bpy dot i think is data and uh, objects and uh, this should give you a list of all objects in your scene and you can see them uh, so you just have to pick uh, the, the name of the object and make sure this is case sensitive so make sure you get it right and then you access now you have entered uh, the object it's also we can access this data uh, is this right yeah i think it's right data and yeah, data and the so the text the actual text itself is under body so if i hit enter you can see i get uh, the text so now uh, if i add a few more text and i run that line again you can see that is updated as well so if I want to change this, I would just assign this a different string. So let me just assign it a number. You can see that's now I just have to copy this line, uh, paste it uh, here. And uh, instead of this string here, I'll just add current frame. But uh, make sure current frame is a, is not a string; it's an integer. And uh, this uh, method here takes and uh, takes a takes a string. So wrap it under a string and uh, paste that. I can just first disable that, run. And then now you can see that uh, we have that changing. So now what I did, I just added the uh, commas and. Uh, other things made this instead of uh, just rendering the value here uh, the frame the frame rate I just gave it a range and a different basically you can just download the script and uh, it's very easy to follow along or maybe I'll comment it a bit so that is even more easier let me just see the final project uh, give give this uh, some materials and the digital font so for the string it's a bit different because uh, this is uh, text and uh, yeah I guess I'll explain that in a different part thanks for watching